Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. Today we are checking out Does Anyone Really Care If Scotland Leaves the UK? Oh my god, is this a hot topic to talk about today? Great. Hit me. Why has Scotland not left the United Kingdom? Scottish independence has been on the table long before the UK decided to leave the European Union. And since then, mm. things have only gotten worse. What on earth is going on in the Conservative Party? With soaring inflation and extreme cost of living crisis, banks having to step in and try and fix government economic budgets and a governing party in disarray. In short, it is total, absolute chaos. The United Kingdom was promised prosperity and growth if they left the European Union. But it appears to be a stagnant country, still trying to find its place in a post-Brexit world. And in the middle of all the parties, chaos and resignations happening in Westminster, 400 miles away in Edinburgh, another conversation is taking place. I'm curious, just because I'm pretty ignorant about it, what year did Scotland join the United Kingdom? 1707. With a party that is sick of being told what to do by those in Westminster. And that question is, what would Scottish independence look like? And is there a way Scotland can ditch the UK for good? So let's play it out. What happens if Scotland leaves the United Kingdom? Good question. It would be so, I guess, funny if Scotland left the UK and joined the European Union. What would happen? So what's the deal with Scottish independence and how has the push for it grown in recent decades? Well, to understand what an independent Scotland wants and could be like, we have to understand a bit of history. In the 17th century, Scotland was an independent kingdom, home to a group called the Scots. In the early 1600s, <laughs> oh. the Scottish land was ruled by King James VI. Three years later, in 1603, James VI of Scotland became James I of England, which caused the two kingdoms to be united. And about a century later, in 1707, their union was formalized as they were brought together under okay. one government as Great Britain. But not everybody living in Scotland was for this, and many felt that the government in London was woefully out of touch with people in, say, Glasgow. But many were actually Probably. happy with the arrangement, or at least found it bearable. Some might say that the vibe is pretty similar to today. And speaking of today, did you know that most people watching our videos are not subscribed? So if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing to help us continue to make these videos. Anyways, in the 20th century, calls increasingly came for devolution. This term refers to the Acts of Parliament of the UK that grant greater yeah. levels. The transfer or delegation of power to a lower level, especially by central government to local or regional administration. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Not a great word, though. It sounds like a setback. This term refers to the Acts of Parliament of the UK that grant greater levels of self-governance to the governments of each unit of the United Kingdom. Basically, stronger localized powers in Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and England. So there's a similar struggle in America between the federal government and the state government. So I can relate. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, pushes came from within Scotland to either become independent or at the very least give Scots a form of representation of their own at home, a dedicated Scottish parliament. That makes sense. I mean, the closer the representation is to the local people, probably the better because they can tailor the rules to their way of life. You'd think that would be, that's a good thing. De-evolution's a good thing, I think. Yeah, I guess it's complicated. And a Scottish Home Rule Bill was even debated on in 1913, and then thrown to the wayside after World War I broke out across Europe. After the war, the Scottish independent movement began to gain steam, with the formation of political parties based on advancing. This was the Scots National League, formed in 1920, and it would go through a number of revamps and later be renamed the Scottish National Party. Ultimately, independence would become part of the SNP's platform in the 1940s. Many would still call for a proper assembly in Scotland, even as a member of the UK. Because at this point in history, there was no Scottish Parliament. All decisions hmm. made regarding Scotland were made in England. That does seem bad. I could see why there would be resentment. If I was a Scottish person and there was someone else making the decisions for me, I would, yeah, I could totally see that. If I was Scottish, I would probably be for leaving the UK. Although, 
What benefits does Scotland get from being a member? Probably a lot of money. This culminated in 1978 when the UK government, then led by the Labour Party, passed the Scotland Act, a chance for Scotland to vote on establishing their own parliament. This would lead to oh. the first of several referendums in Scotland, the devolution referendum of 1979. If passed, this act would lead to an actual Scottish Parliament being established, which would allow the people of Scotland to have direct representation of their own country, in Sounds addition like to thing. representation in Westminster. And the revolution passed, with nearly 52% of voters saying yes. Okay. However, only 64% of eligible Scottish voters turned out. Why is that important? Well, due to a provision in an amendment to the Scottish Act, the referendum was only valid if 40% of all eligible voters voted yes. Uh... And in the 1979 referendum, only 33% had. Oh. So even though the referendum had passed, it hadn't passed quite hard enough. Right. This, as we will see in a bit, is one of the many instances where many in Scotland felt that their voice was being suppressed by the UK government. And it's easy to see how this could continue to be a problem. According to the current data, England has a population of over 56 million, while Scotland has just 5.4 <gasps> million. Oh. If those in Scotland feel like the- Wow. The city I live in has more people than the whole country of Scotland. I mean, I thought there would be 5 million people in Glasgow alone. If those in Scotland feel like the English have more representation on the national level, well, it's true because they do. More MPs for more people. Right. So it is 1997. I am four. That doesn't matter. But the Labour Party are back in power. That does matter. And held another referendum in Scotland. This one only had two questions, one on whether or not a Scottish parliament should be established and one on if a parliament was formed, if it should have the ability to set its own taxes. With a 60% turnout, both- See, I told you it's about money. Money, money, money. With a 60% turnout, both questions received a resounding approval and over 74% of people voted yes to both. Okay. All right. And the Scottish Parliament was established on July the 1st, 1919. Hey! Great. Finally. Congratulations, Scotland. I didn't know. That's wonderful. That's a reason to celebrate, right? Democracy. Great. Finally, they have a parliament. Will that mean things are good? We'll find out. Eight years later, the SNP would come to power. As before, they pushed for an independent Scotland, though it was undecided if most Scots felt the same. So they were like, let's find out. So in 2014, the SNP government made an agreement with the UK government to hold a simple one question referendum. Voters were simply asked, should Scotland be an independent country? And it was huge. It was mm. massively publicized, an 85% voter turnout. You really don't think we should sort of split from Britain. I'm quite happy with the way the country is. Already voted postally, yes. Which way you're going to vote yet? Yes. You're going to vote yes or you've decided? No, I'm not going to vote yes. <laughs> of course not. I'm not that <laughs> soft. Spoiler, as we all know, well, you're watching. Who is this woman? If she was a man, she would rule the world right now. The referendum failed to pass. That's pretty close. 44% to 55%. Y'all, it's important to vote. If there's an election, get out there and vote. Because along with feeling generally stable in regards to the state of the UK, one major reason many Scots voted to remain was due to also enjoying the benefits of being part of the EU. So overall, oh. people decided to stay. We're not leaving. We are... So it's not that they wanted to stay in the United Kingdom, it's that they wanted to stay a part of the European Union. The plot thickens. We're not leaving. We are staying part of the United Kingdom. We like it here. It's stable. We can travel to Europe. We can live in Europe. We can trade with Europe. Uh, Those things are great. And then yeah. two years later, you will decide. Should the United Kingdom remain a member of the European Union? Because the EU is making a mess of virtually everything. If we as a country decide to quit, then we're out for good. We wouldn't have a seat at the table. So to leave and take back control. It's Thursday. It could be our country's independence day. Whatever your decision. I will do my best to deliver it. And I have therefore been able to certify the results of the referendum. Dare to dream that the dawn is breaking on an independent United Kingdom. I've heard some British citizens mention in the comments that Brexit has been a mess. 
I've not heard anyone say that Brexit has been wonderful. Maybe it has been for some people. I don't know. Most of Scotland voted to remain, despite the UK as a whole opting to leave the European oh. Union by a narrow margin. Brexit was hugely unpopular in Scotland, to such a degree that an EU flag still remains flying outside the Scottish Parliament. Rebellion. Every single council in Scotland saw a majority remain vote. And during the long oh, wait, transition, show me that every council in Scotland saw a majority remain vote. That puts things into perspective. And during the long transition period that dragged into 2020, the Scottish Parliament would continue to butt heads with the Conservative UK government. And in many of these cases, the results would push for more and more people to call for a second independent referendum because the board had changed. They no longer had those benefits of the EU. Similar to the feelings in 1979, many in Scotland felt like their country was losing a ton of autonomy post-Brexit. Mm. And as I'm recording yeah. this, the UK is not in a great state. We've had 15 years of low economic growth and the economy is facing a huge downturn. Food and energy prices are skyrocketing. In the span of three months, a prime minister has resigned after numerous scandals and no general election is in sight. The Conservative Party then spent the summer looking for a replacement, which came in the form of Liz Truss, who only lasted 45 days in oh, office yeah. and was then replaced by Rishi Sunak. And as all of this is unfolding, poll after poll is showing that even more people in Scotland want to leave the UK and rejoin the EU. So what happens if Scotland leaves the UK? Yeah. Well, Nicola Sturgeon, leader of the SNP, said that free movement of people across our islands will continue as before. So it's very likely that borders between Scotland and England would remain open and you okay. wouldn't require to have your passport on you when you're traveling. It's also a given that you EU would or you would not. I missed you, that. So it's very likely that borders between Scotland and England would remain open and you wouldn't require to have your passport on you when you're traveling. Would, it's also a okay. given that EU membership would be sought after as soon as possible to regain access to the EU single market and free movement of labor, goods and services across the European Union. They would also have control over their own health care. Scotland has controlled the operation of nice. NHS Scotland since 1999, but funding and policy decisions are made in Westminster. It was shown during the COVID-19 pandemic that Scots had more trust in Nicola Sturgeon handling the pandemic than of the government in Westminster. Sturgeon has long campaigned for preventing NHS privatisation, so it's likely funding and policy decisions would verge away from NHS England. And of course, Scotland would regain its autonomy and could make its own decisions over energy, environmental policies, immigration, social security, foreign policies and defence. He's making a great case for why Scotland should leave the UK. But why should they stay? And on that front, Scotland also does have benefits of being part of the UK. Oh, here Trondon we go. Trondon is the UK nuclear programme. And they have a number of naval bases set up, bases mm. that are major assets in protecting the entirety of the British Isles. This includes HMNB Clyde, which currently employs over 8,000 people. Scotland can accept Trident? Like, of course they want protection. Like, what? That's not a that's not a limitation. I don't see why that's a barrier. If a threat of potential war was to happen, Scotland would be better protected with the UK than on their own. So right. if Scotland did gain independence, could they opt in to join NATO as an extra peace of mind yeah. defense-wise? Yeah, good and idea. What would that mean for British defense with fleets of nuclear submarines having to be moved from Scottish waters? No, no. They still be allies. The United States and Britain are allies and we're not the same country. I just watched a video that told me that if an SAS member wants to ride on a United States military vehicle, they totally can. And they're very welcome and respected. I don't think if Scotland left the UK that they would totally sever every tie. Right? They're family, essentially, right? Literally, in some cases. That's not a big deal, moving the submarines from Scottish waters. They're vehicles. They move very easily. They don't need to be shipped you just point the submarine in a different direction and push go and it goes there, basically. Well, Professor Malcolm Chalmers said, building an alternative nuclear submarine base in the UK would be a massive undertaking and could not be done in five years. Hey, and hey, okay. That's no reason to not let it go through. 
Let them keep their submarines there for five years. What's the big deal? Your family. I think this guy's a shill for the, uh, the United Kingdom who wants all that Scottish tax money. And he went on to say an independent Scotland would have to accept Trident for more than 10 years if Fine. it wanted to join NATO. That's not a big deal. There's also the question of trade, particularly with the UK. England is Scotland's largest trading partner. If Scotland wants to rejoin the EU, this could complicate the trade partnership with the UK. A report examining the financial impact of trade in Scottish independent concluded that the costs of independence to the Scottish economy are likely to be two to three times larger than the cost of Brexit and rejoining the EU would do very little to mitigate these costs. They also said from a trade perspective, an independent Scotland would be considered poorer than staying in the United Kingdom. Based on what information? I need more proof to believe that. If Scotland could do their own negotiating with trade, it would be in Scotland's best interest, right? So Maybe. here's the million dollar question. Will this happen? Well, unlike if, say, Texas left the US, which <laughs> would mean war, mechanisms are in place for parts of the UK to leave, in theory. In November of 2022, the British Supreme Court judges have rejected the Scottish government's argument that it can hold a second independence referendum. The court unanimously concludes the Scottish Parliament does not have the power to legislate for a referendum on Scottish independence. Nicola Sturgeon uh, says that the judgment late for a referendum on Scottish independence. The, uh, okay. Any country can declare their independence. I mean, that's why wars break out sometimes, right? The sky, what, I, what, you, you suck. It's just to take a referendum. It's not even to be independent. It's just to see what the people want. And this guy's saying you can't do it? He concludes the Scottish Parliament does not have the power to legislate for a referendum on Scottish independence. Nicola Sturgeon says that the judgment closes one door, but she believes the next general election can be used as a de facto vote on independence. Ah. The future of Scotland is dependent on many things. Will they hold a new referendum? Can they? Will people vote to leave the UK? Or will they end up remaining, like in 2014? Will the UK continue to object? Will this court case permanently delay a vote? Will they try to hold one no matter what the results? The future is uncertain, and every time whilst researching this video that we thought we saw a clear path, we'd find something else that had influenced the still evolving story of Scotland. In general, I think that the more people are united together, the better off they are in terms of a lot of things like trade, defense. But in this scenario, I don't know. So Scotland's been in the UK for 316 years. I could see how they'd be so intertwined with England that it would not be worth leaving. But at the same time, I could also see how having more localized representation and being able to legislate more specifically to the physical location, the region that people live in, would probably give Scotland some easier maneuverability in terms of global trade and defense. They're claiming it would be a big military issue, but if, if Britain was really cool about it, they could just keep it going. They, they, you, could, you could easily blend the military. I mean, they could share, they could figure it out, but it, I'm sure it all comes down to England wants that Scottish tax money. They also don't want the competition from Scotland. If Brexit continues to be bad for the economy of Great Britain, I could totally see Scotland leaving. It, it honestly probably all comes down to money. They're talking about national security, but it's, it's money. I'm pretty sure it's money. It probably all comes down to running the numbers. If I have any Scottish viewers out there, I'd be curious to know what you think. It looks like it's pretty split down the middle. But I think that's probably because we don't really know what would happen. Well, really interesting video. Thank you all for recommending. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time. Later.